In this video, we're gonna go through some of my highlights from this month's Power BI November 2021 feature update, including things like the new format pane, the page navigator, the new Google Sheets connector, and more. All of that and a few more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start with the first update which is the new format pane. Now this gives a fresh look to the format pane uh, from the old uh, view um, while also adding some small changes that makes it a lot easier for you to discover some settings. So the new format pane, as you notice, uh, moves the visuals to a new build tab. This saves the sort of vertical space in the pane. Uh, there's also a new option to revert all settings to defaults. And then a new search feature, which allows you to search for specific settings quite easily. Uh, there's more in this new format pane, and I'll leave a link uh, in the description box below for the full blog post on what's been added. And by the way, don't forget that it's a preview feature at the moment. So if you want to start using this new format pane, you'll need to enable it under the preview settings in order to use them. The next thing is the page navigator, which automatically creates a navigation menu for your users very easily. I made a video in the past covering how to create your own navigational menu. However, this comes with some slight inconveniences. Now, first of all is that you need to set them up individually for each page and if you decide to add new ones you will need to modify all of the different menus in all the different pages however now with this new built-in feature will allow you to create navigators quickly and easily you'll find this option now under buttons in the navigator you'll be able to choose between bookmark or page navigator a page navigator automatically creates a set of buttons for each page that you have in your report and will already be in sync to your report. What does that mean? This means that the title of your buttons will be the page titles, the order of the buttons will match your page order, and the selected button within the navigator is the current page you have that navigator on. What's even better with this new navigator feature is that when you update or add new pages in your reports, this navigator will automatically sync to match up with your changes. There's also a bookmark navigator, which allows you to do the exact same thing, except for bookmarks. So it's great if you want to cycle through the bookmarks that you have. Um, if you don't know how to use bookmarks, I covered it in a separate video, um, specifically how to use it to cycle through different menu pages within the same page. So check that out if you haven't yet. Both navigators have tons of customization options from the look and feel of it, as well as the options on what to show. So go play around and see how you can use this new feature. The text box has now been updated. So you have new options like the superscript, subscripts, or bulleted lists, which gives you a bit of greater flexibility when you're using text boxes. A scorecard visual is now integrated into Power BI Desktop. Now, from what I remember uh, before, you could only see and manage the scorecards from the Power BI service, but now you can use them and manage them uh, through a visual within your Power BI Desktop. This is a great option and makes it easy for your users to create and manage their goals directly into Power BI Desktop during development. However, goals is a premium feature at the moment, so that's why I don't cover it very often. However, if you're interested in learning more about this goals and this scorecard visual, I'll leave a link to the blog post below as well. There is now a Google Sheets native connector in Power BI Desktop. This means that you can now connect your Power BI reports to your Google Sheets directly. Now that's not to say you can't do it before and I actually created a tutorial a couple of months ago on how to do it using the web connector. However, that web connector requires you to set your documents on public uh, in order for the Power BI web connector to connect to it. And as you might expect, putting your documents as public means anyone who has that URL can see that data, which you probably don't want uh, when it comes to data governance. But now with this new native connector, you'll be able to find it under get data, uh, paste the URL the same way that you do before, uh, except this time Power BI will handle the authentication for you. 
So it's a great way to keep your reports and data connected. And having a native connector like this makes it even easier for you to use Google Sheets as a source. There were some updates in the Power BI service. You can now view data sets from your reports directly. Um, it's pretty useful if you want to quickly check your refresh status or refresh schedules, things like this. There were tons of updates to the goals, like the new goal level permissions, which sort of works similar to RLS, which is role level security, except for goals. So basically, this allows you to create roles, then customize what those roles can do. So you might want to have just a viewer role where people can look at the goals but can't change them. So similar to the RLS and then assign people to these roles. Another interesting thing that they've added for goals is the integration to Power Automate. This means that you're able to create Power Automate jobs to either manage your reports or your goals automatically using Power Automate. So now when you create a Power Automate flow, you'll find that when you look for Power BI triggers and actions, you'll find a lot more that is related to goals. I'll leave a list in the screen now for you to see what sort of triggers and actions are available for you now to integrate and work with goals. Lastly, a few updates on the mobile version. So if you have the Power BI app on your phone, you have this option to scan a QR code which opens a Power BI report. But did you know that you can actually use it to add query parameters to your reports? Query parameters were mainly used to add onto the URL to filter certain parts of your report. So maybe you want a QR code that when you scan it will automatically be filtered to a specific department or a QR code that filters to a specific role. That's what a query parameter does. It adds uh, certain parameters into the URL to kind of pre-filter the reports when it gets viewed. Filter panes were also updated in the mobile version to make for a cleaner and better user experience. And it supports different color customizations. Uh, don't use the uh, mobile version so much, but uh, there you go. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I only covered some of the highlights that I thought was really interesting to cover. Uh, and I didn't cover the full list of changes for this month. However, if you want to see the full list, I'll leave a link to the blog post of the full article. Uh, so you can check it out if you want to. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.